Hey guys, it's good to see you back. So after the home lab videos, I need one thing, like I need to monitor all of that stuff, right? So uh, today in this video, we're gonna try to set up the storage monitoring with a Zabbix smart monitoring uh, using the Zabbix agent too. And I don't have anything prepared at all. The only thing that I have is uh, Zabbix server running uh, as usually from the Docker containers, in my case on a Oracle Linux 8, but it doesn't make any difference. And there's just one host, right? So nothing big. And while the NAS server is still under the table and waiting to do the true NAS configuration, I will do like proof of concept to monitor my uh, Windows machine, the same which uh, you are seeing right now on which I have uh, my virtual machine with the Zabbix. So uh, to get started, the first thing that we obviously need is, uh, let me put this away. Uh, this a bit like that. Uh, we can search for Zabbix smart monitoring and we will find the integration page. Um, smart monitoring official template supported by the Zabbix agent too. The only thing that's, that we can see here is that there is small bug because these pages, it appears like are duplicated. So both of these actually are the same. And as you can see, this template is for the Zabbix version 6.2, but it is also available for 6.0, 5.4 and 5.0. I am using 6.4, so no issues at all. Um, Let's get started. The first thing that we obviously need is we need to have a Zabbix Agent 2 on our Windows machine. If we would be monitoring this, the disks on the Linux, then obviously we need to install it on a Linux server. But right now for the Windows, we can go to the Zabbix.com, uh, click on the green download button, go only to the Zabbix Agents. Uh, I assume we don't need anything else, like we don't need to install the Zabbix server. Uh, Windows, any AMD in my case, uh, Zabbix version 6.4, whatever MSI, and we are looking for the Zabbix Agent 2, version 6.4.11. So click on the good old download page, put it whatever you want, uh, wait for a couple of seconds for it to download. When the MSI is actually downloaded, the only thing that you need to do is double click on it then as usually you will have a couple of next 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 options so next yes i do accept all the terms of the license agreement uh, you can choose what you can choose location where this will be installed the agent sender and a get but again for for this monitoring we're going to need only the zabbix agent so click next host name doesn't really matter in this case like if you're planning to do the um, active agent monitoring, so connection will be outgoing from the agent to the Zabbix server, then you must create a host inside a Zabbix in the front end here, having exactly the same host name as you set it in the um, installation process. But don't you worry if you make some mistakes or change your mind after the installation, you can always change this to your preferred value in the configuration file of the agent. I will show it to you a bit later, I guess. Zabbix server IP DNS. This is uh, mandatory, at least for me, because I will be configuring the passive agent monitoring, which means that the server will be connecting um, to my agent, which means that in the agent configuration file, I need to show which IP addresses I will be accepting. Right, so my agent will not accept communication from all computers available out there. It will accept only from what we specify here. And I think uh, the IP address will be like this. At least that's the IP address of my virtual machine. The listening port of the agent is default 10050 and server proxy for active checks. Well, that's again, um, I'm not gonna plan. I'm not planning to use the active checks, but just for the sake of being correct, it should be the same as it is for the passive checks. Enable PS key. So if you want to do encryption, I don't. Again, this is just a proof of concept. And add agent location to the path. This could potentially create some problems in the future if you don't. So better safe than sorry. Just add the checkbox and click next. Then it's gonna start the installation process, which again will take a couple of seconds. 
when the installation is completed, we can actually check. Uh, we can type in services.msc and right in the bottom, we should have Zabbix Agent 2, which is running, right? So we have a Zabbix Agent 2 on our system right now, which is very good. Now let's try, can we actually establish a connection from our Zabbix server to this Zabbix Agent running on my uh, Windows machine. So here we have a CLI. I did some mess here previously. Um, yeah, I think it was correct. So let's do the Docker PS. Here we can find the container with the Zabbix server and let's try to um, shell inside this container. So Docker exec minus IT container ID bash. We're inside so we can run the Zabbix sender, which basically will be just the same stuff as uh, the Zabbix server executing the passive check. So Zabbix sender, uh, sorry, not the Zabbix sender, Zabbix get, forgive me. Uh, Zabbix get minus S, here we need to enter the IP address of uh, the Zabbix agent that we're gonna pull. And in my case, it's gonna be 192.168.56.1 and minus key, whatever we want to check system dot hostname as example there we go and uh, this is indeed my windows machine so we know that agent is running on a windows host and we also know that uh, communication from our zabbix server on the virtual machine to the agent to host on a windows machine is successful so there's just one thing left for us to do we need to go to the front end of our Zabbix and first of all, create a host. Let's call it uh, proof of concept. No, let's call it subscribe because guys, you know, like this is the best way how you can help me or, or this channel um, to push it further in, in the depths of the YouTube algorithm. You need to click subscribe, you need to click like, and you also need to comment. That would be very preferable. And of course, the longer you watch the video, the better it is because there is such metric as average view duration, which tells a lot YouTube about the quality of this video and the higher it is, the more YouTube pushes it uh, to the public. And also don't forget to sign up for the Discord link to which you can find in the description. We'll be doing all sort of crazy stuff together and I will try to involve you as much as possible. But for now, so we have a host name, subscribe and uh, let's forget about the template right now. Uh, let's add the host group windows whatever let's call it like this windows subscribe and windows interfaces we are monitoring agent right it doesn't matter if it's agent one or agent two it's still an agent and ip address is 192 168.56.1 we already found that so click add we have a host availability will remain gray and nothing will happen because we don't have any items and we don't have any templates linked to this host. So this is basically our last step. So go to the host, um, find the templates, and we are looking for the smart by Zabbix agent two, not the active one. Remember the active is when the agent is performing connection to your Zabbix server and it requires different for different parameters for the Zabbix agent active. You need the server active and you need the hostname parameter to match the hostname in the front end. We are going the simpler way when the Zabbix server will be connecting to the agent. And that is just this smart by Zabbix agent Two. click update. Let's see what we got here right now. We still don't have any items. We don't have any triggers. We don't have any graphs, but we have one low level discovery rule. And this one is actually running this discovery. So what it will do, it will discover all the disks on our Windows machine. In this case, it has filters to um, the name of the disk must match the smart disk name matches. So that's we're going to check it on the template. And there are also some overrides. And the most important is that this disk discovery has 20 item prototypes. So for every discover disk, it will create 20 items that it will monitor. And uh, let's try to do the actual discovery. Let's uh, it's not supported. Fail to execute smart CTL. Executable file not found in the path. Um...
Okay, don't ask me how, but somehow after trial and don't ask me how, but somehow we did fix the problem. And as you can see, I did a lot of troubleshooting here and basically just pushing the same button, hoping that uh, uh, it's going to start to work. But what I found is uh, it should be somewhere uh, somewhere here is that uh, what you need to do is install the Zabbix Agent 2 and Smart Mountain Tools 7.1, which we did, and you need to grant the Zabbix Agent 2 the Super Admin User Privilege for Smart CTL Utility, which I did in the background of this video. And then the interesting thing is that whenever I had this plugins path specified in the plugins smart.conf configuration file, it actually didn't work. And uh, you can see it here here in a previous example so when i was running zabbix agent d minus t smart disk discovery without specifying the config file we got a response but whenever i tried to uh, use a configuration file in which i've actually had it pointed to the smart ctl utility it failed to execute the smart ctl command execution failed exit status one so in the end i've commented it out i've restarted my zabbix agent and uh, right now we can go again to the front and click execute now and should wait a second or two this became available we can go to my subscribe host, which we can find here. We have 20 items and I can also run this, get this attributes, execute now to the monitoring latest data, find our subscribe host here. And uh, well, eventually we will get all the, all the data I'm sure, but uh, there we go. So this is how you can monitor your smart um, of your storage. And I guess we're going to do the same for uh, for the home lab setup. So thank you guys for watching. Hope this does make sense and see you later.